To the Smitty and D Show, of course, I am Tony D, and in the studio we have a old time, I want to say family friend, like a friend friend, like I've known her for years, I actually got my career started because of this woman. She's my Detroit sis. You may have recognized her on many, many shows that she's already been on, and uh, I want to say Michael Jackson discovered you too right i think so kind of a little bit kind of a little bit welcome to the studio nikki gilbert daniels oh let me say this right what up though what up though what up though what up though (laughs) hey friend hi beautiful how are you oh my god it's so good to be here finally right you finally invited me to your show i mean you've been blowing up and everything and i'm like how can i get on the show and you're like no forget about it don't even try it so, my thank Detroit you. Sis. Thank you Y'all know me. I really did start my career with you. You know that? You don't <laughs> you even want to talk about that, but I really did. Y'all, I used to do her hair in her house yes. while she was writing these masterpieces. I think it was the cabaret one. Sokin's cabaret. Sokin. Yes. I was back uh, then watching yeah. Yeah. as you were typing, right. doing hair. Well, it was, there was, yeah. yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Humble always, beginnings. And look at you now. Like, look at you a now. A whole podcast. I'm just saying. Like, the hair is hairing. The it's, hairline is hairlining. You. Okay, sis. You're just doing the damn thing. We're so. doing it together. Thank you. So, what do you got going on? I know that you're fabulous, but you got a lawsuit <laughs> going on. Oh, we just got right on into it. Yes. Yes, we did. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. I have a, a claim that's been going on for a while. Okay. Um, it's no secret that mm. um, if you log on to PACER or wrfmedia.com you can see mm-hmm. all of the legal paperwork which we like to stay in that space but yeah got mm-hmm. a little something going on we're just trying I, to fix some things before i really really get into it uh-huh. how's your husband how's how's your kids how are your grandbaby my grandson braylon is just an incredible person he is wow. just i'm so proud of him mm. he is like um one of my biggest lessons in life he came along literally um a few months after max he passed away mm. right so it was the the situation with Maxie was probably, not probably, I think it was. Now, tell everybody who's Maxie. Maxie, Maxina, um, is my sister mm-hmm. and uh, co-founder of Brownstone. Mm-hmm. Um, she unfortunately passed away in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, and a few months later, my grandson was born. Mm. So, and it's interesting, she was waiting for him to come too. So, mm. you know, he's here and... He is an incredible old soul. It's yeah. crazy. How and, did she pass? That's an interesting um, story. Another one of those things you just kind of have to, I don't really talk about it much, but oh, no. there was an accident at her house. Yeah. And unfortunately, she, you know, went to heaven a little early. Yeah. Not unfortunately. We all pray we go to heaven. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we miss her terribly. Yeah. Whatever yeah. happened to the uh, original, the other original member? Mimi. Yeah. Yeah. She performed with us in... I think 2018 for mm-hmm. an Essence Reunion special, Aww. which was dope. Not special, a Essence Reunion in the Super Lounge. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Mimi is an educator. She wants to retire as an educator. Wow. She's an awesome jazz singer. We have fun. You yeah. know, she's obviously um, just an incredible person, and, mm-hmm. and, w- and we wish her the best in her jazz aspirations and of course Mm -hmm. she has a passion for kids and educating kids and that's part of the reason why she decided that she was going to pursue that so yeah yeah she comes from a very educated family we love it so yeah we love the ladies too that are part of it (laughs) they're amazing they sing so well i feel like okay this gonna be bad (laughs) Did y'all level up a little bit? Did, just, did we level up a little bit? A little is bit. that what you said? Yeah, I just asked that. I mean, we like to elevate. I yeah. think, you know, it's divine order to borrow mm-hmm. from my girl, our Detroit sister, Gail mm-hmm. Perry Mason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a blessing to have Aaron. Aaron and Alexis are sisters, mm-hmm. so they perform together their whole lives. And then they have a third sister, Ashley, who is an incredibly anointed, oh, my God, just beautiful inside and out mm-hmm. and just great energy. So I feel like Maxie has definitely blessed us. Mm. Um, she approves for sure. You yeah. go through a process, but we here now. I love oh, it. Oh, we here. I love it. <laughs> Talk about how Michael Jackson may have uh, discovered you guys a oh, little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's a blessing. Um, chubby little girl from Detroit with a chip on my shoulders, you know, um, always wanted to sing and lucked up on an opportunity to go to where there was a video shoot where someone saw us walking down Melrose and Maxie was absolutely stunning, Mm. right? So she had her long hair and Mm -hmm. Sky Shep is like, you know, I'm shooting this video. My parents are funding and I'd love for you to be like the lead woman in my video. Mm. And you know me, the chubby girl with the big mouth and the chip on my shoulder. I was like, girl, you should go on ahead and do it. We can network with them. You never know. Maybe his parents can help us put our demo together. Blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So we go 
and um, a tire blows out on one of the 15 passenger vans. So I stayed behind with one of the people who was the producer, a young guy. Mm -hmm. Child, long story short, in the book, in the upcoming doc, Mm -hmm. um, left me stranded in the desert, like banning someplace way out, right? (laughs) Left me stranded. He decided, you know, we walked up. It was crazy. It's a long story. But long and short, I'm walking through this small desert town where everything is shut down and I'm just praying and I'm crying and I'm like I cannot believe he left me Lord if you get me out of this I promise happened upon a police station right went in there called collect to Mimi because we did not have cell phones back in the day she drove I think it was maybe three something in the morning when she picked me up I got back Maxie snug as a bug in a rug sleeping in her closet because she had a walk-in closet so I slept in the living room and she slept in the closet it was a studio it was a small uh-huh. small space uh-huh. and I'm like did you know they left? She was like, oh, my God, I stayed up. They told me they were getting you. So uh, after that, Shep reached back out and was like, listen, I want to make it up to you. Mm. I left you stranded in the desert. I want to introduce you to someone really important. Introduce us to this guy, Barry Kolsky, mm-hmm. for, who was the head of a publishing company. Mm-hmm. It was a courtesy meeting because Barry was like, uh, nice, but not what we're looking for. On the way out the door, talk about persistence and favor. The two owners of the publishing company, Marla McNally and Linda Blum, were like, what was that upstairs? And, you know, Detroit manager, Big Mom. Us, some songs we wrote, the demo, da, 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 sing it again. We sang it again. She was like, can you come back in two weeks? We came back in two weeks. Next thing you know, we was in front of Jerry Greenberg, having no idea that he was the head of Michael Jackson's label. Had an audition, and the rest is history. Wow. And in the doc, and in the book. Hey! <laughs> yeah. So it was just about one of my first lessons about you know, faith and perseverance because mm. I was straight up stranded in the desert. Jeez Louise. Yeah. You've seen a lot of things change. How do you think the industry has <clears> changed <throat> since you were in it? I mean, like when you first started getting it, when, when you first were in it. How has it changed? Since you were first in it. In the last 30 years? Because that was <laughs> when I was lot. first in it. I'm a, yeah. a, a grown ass. You said old time. Young. I like to think of myself as vintage. She's veteran, not though. Like, you She's know, fresh and new. 53. Um, it's changed a lot. I think now, um, I think now what is unfortunate is it's really just become a numbers game, right? It's become about um, how many streams, um, how many um, ads you can put on on a TikTok video, right? Mm-hmm. The, the art, the artist development, um, the stories that mm-hmm. we used to tell, right? That's the reason why you're listening. You know, that's the reason why we don't have a problem going out. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. We don't have a problem going out playing for sold out audiences, right? Mm -hmm. Because people who really appreciate great music and even with a younger audience, right? Mm -hmm. People who appreciate artists who are developed come out and support us in concert and Mm -hmm. they still listen to our music. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because there was a process called artist development that we went through that unfortunately a lot of artists today don't really know what that means. Artist development is drop it low and spread it wide. Mm -hmm. Artist development is tell the story about bang, bang, shoot them up, Mm -hmm. right? And unfortunately, there's no longevity in any of that, right? We see that based on, you know, so many other tragic stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the biggest thing that's changed in the music is we've gotten away from artist development. We've gotten away from art. And mm. we've just started to think more about spins and advertising opportunities and monetizing bullshit, right? right? Can you make money now with all these... Because I feel like... You know, I think artists are probably making a lot of money um, because they have a lot more opportunity to reach people, Mm -hmm. right? And it's a lot harder to hide um, now that streams report, you know, how many times a record plays. Um, I think the owners of the content are are making the real money, Mm -hmm. right? I think um, it's clear in in everything you you read and, and see and the SAG after strikes and you know what I mean it's just mm-hmm. you know the big boys are definitely making money right artists are you know enjoying the vapor mm-hmm. that is fame mm. right and um, when you say vapor do you mean that they are not making a whole lot I don't know see I don't know what's in anybody's bank account gotcha, right but gotcha, what I can gotcha. tell you is that how much more famous can you become than Michael Jackson mm. how much more famous can you become than Prince mm-hmm. right Prince wrote slave on the side of his face because something wasn't adding up right Mm. so when you start thinking about fame right Mm -hmm. at some point as you get older you realize that fame isn't the legacy that you can pass down to your kids to make sure they get great 
educations and stuff, right? Fame isn't um, the generational wealth opportunities that you can get through real estate and, and, and long term. Like you see perpetuity all the time, right? Perpetuity is good mm -hmm. if the artists and the creatives who create the content that is being monetized in perpetuity were also benefiting from that in perpetuity. Mm. Unfortunately, they choose the fame. And then that mist and that vapor disappears and, and you're kind of dealing with the reality of what so many people face, mm. you know, which is you have no ownership, you have no power, and you have no money most yeah. of the time. Most of the time. Wow. Yeah. So artists that are out now, mm -hmm. and you talked about artist development. Yeah. How are these, my booty hole is brown girls, <laughs> getting through? How is this even possible? You know, I just think... Um, the UDA, the owners of the algorithm, mm -hmm. right? That's my pet name for them. Um, have just decided what goes, right? I think that's just the, the harsh reality of it. I think that, um, again, back to ownership, the people who have the ability to dictate what we see in the masses, right? I think about the, the cartoon um, came out some years ago, and it's just a bunch of people walking in a line, and everybody's falling into this dark hole, right? And, and like you're trying to let people know like there is a dark nothingness hole there and everybody's just on their phone flipping, right? And very few people look up enough or fast enough to save themselves. And I think it's just a whole bunch of people flipping themselves into a hole. And um, it's because that is what we're conditioned to believe is what entertainment is, right? I mean, we know that, you know, my booty hole brown wouldn't have, wouldn't have flown many years ago, right? Yeah. When we were talking about artist development and mm -hmm. quality control, real actual quality control, mm -hmm. like what they had at Motown, right? Mm -hmm. We know that stuff wouldn't fly mm -hmm. then because we were just as a people in a place where we had much more pride in who we were, right? We understood that it's one thing to be famous, but responsibility comes along with that. So when you think about songs like We Are the World, when you think about artists really advocating, we think about what Muhammad Ali did for the culture. When you think about what Ruby Dee and Ozzy Davis did for the culture. When you think about what Nina Simone did for the culture. Those messages are diluted because the owners of the algorithm have decided that they want to highlight the very worst of who we are. And until we get to a place where we're less interested in fame and money and more interested in the responsibility of the art and, and speaking honestly about what's really going on, that's what it'll be. Mm. So, you know, you have to kind of decide if you're trying to change a lot of people's perspective or just impact and inspire and change the perspective of some great leaders so that, you know, we can, because that's what it takes. It takes people who are unafraid to be honest about what's really going on. Are you? Um, that's an interesting question because there are times when I operate and do what I have to do from a place of fear, right? But you do it anyway, mm. right? I'm not walking around here saying I'm fearless. I don't fear what most people fear, mm -hmm. right? My fear is I have a different kind of fear. I have a fear of what things would be like if I didn't speak up and if I wasn't coming from the most authentic place for myself, right? That's why we have so many mental health issues, so much drug, so so much dr drug abuse mm -hmm. in entertainment. Um, so many tragic, traumatic, awful stories, because people have to play the game, right? And I have more of a fear of what happens when I play the game and pretend like this shit is okay, than I do of, you know. Let's talk about it. Give me an idea of playing the game in the industry, or give the the viewers. I don't really know what that is because I don't play. You don't the game. play it at all. I don't. I don't play the game. So you stay away. That's that's the reason why I'm such a problem for so many people. Ooh. Yeah. You think you're a problem because oh, you yeah. speak up and speak out? I do. I do. Have you been labeled? Of course. Really? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Not me being surprised by I this answer. I appreciate the shock of it all, but yeah, absolutely. Maybe I'm just naive with this, but I thought yeah. you were like, you know. Like? Like <laughs> thebomb.com. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, I think that there are real people, and and that's because your perspective is different than, you know, general so population. I guess, so right? okay, so what I would say is I'm coming more from a 
viewer's perspective, yeah. not necessarily people that are in the industry. So I don't know what's happening in the industry, no. but I can tell you that the viewers see you as being the bomb.com. You Thank know what you I'm saying? And I feel Thank like, you. I feel like with this whole lawsuit, which we're about to talk about, you are changing the conversation and the narrative mm. for intellectual property, but also what we should be expecting in media. Like at some point we have to say, okay, it's enough, enough is enough. Like yeah. we went too far. Mm. Like the people that are in charge don't look like us, but they're promoting us and they're pr promoting, like you said, the worst version of us. Right. When is it gonna stop? Incidentally, I went to a retreat this weekend. Mm. Normally I don't talk y'all, but I went to a <laughs> retreat this weekend and I met with a judge and I mm. met with a woman who owned a, um, a uh, gosh, a funeral home mm. and also met with a DA. Mm. And they were telling me how bad it's getting to the point where they are burying more and more of the youth. Mm. It's getting so bad mm -hmm. that they almost have to assume that they're gonna have a few youth a month. I mean, not a month, but a week to bury. And then the, the, the juvenile court judge told me, she said that you should see the parents that come in. Mm. It's the parents, it's the mom who doesn't wanna grow up. Mm. Mm -hmm. she, she's obsessed with being a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. she, she's obsessed with being current and relevant. Mm -hmm. and, and these kids are getting under-parented. Mm. And then they go to school <clears throat> mm -hmm. and they have to use guns to protect themselves. Mm. So it's getting out of control. Yeah. And on top of that, they're doing things that the lyrics suggest. <laughs> so if you're talking about eating somebody's butt or something, these right. kids are doing it. Yeah. And the doctor that was there is saying these kids are getting warts around their mouths as, as young as middle school. That's what she's seeing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's sad. Um, it's really sad because we know that, you know, people want to tell you, read a book, you know, yeah. go to school, yeah. you know, have manners, right? right? But you have to see it in order to believe that it's possible, right? right? So I think the more that we keep these narratives of, you know, and this isn't about me trying to attack P-Valley, but as, as, as long as we have to be strippers and, and bad bitches, and drug dealers and shooters mm. and, and what is it drill rappers and mm. all that other stuff you know as long as we there are some things that I think we should still hold sacred and I think relationships intimate relationships whether they're gay straight whatever there's something about the intimacy that's why they're called intimate relationships right that is why it's called intimacy mm -hmm. now we're at a place where it is a prerequisite for you to drop it low and spread it wide and show your stuff, right? Now it's not even sexy anymore. So the, the sexiest person, one of the sexiest people on the planet is Sade. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know who Sade is, I can't help you. But well, Sade is actually the name of the band, but the, yes. the front runner, Miss Helen of Sade, mm -hmm. um, so sexy. Wait a minute, that's her name? Yes. I am so, <laughs> did y'all, did you know that? Did you know that? Sade is the name of the band. I mm -hmm. did not know that. The group. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And her name is Helen. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm just putting her business all in the street. Oh, I think so. Allegedly. I don't Allegedly. Know. We'll, right. we'll edit that out. Right. <laughs> she saw that. But we'll yeah, I just think it's it. um, you know, it's crazy. I look at um the the I just I just look at all the negative, awful, terrible stereotypes. And I've been talking about this. Like this this shouldn't just Yeah, yeah. Child, I've been talking about this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Right? since I don't want to rain on this parade, but I'm starting to question a little, no. 30 years I've been talking about the importance of having some class mm -hmm. and, and really some, some self-worth, self right? Having some dignity and respect. Some of the things that the elders taught us are valuable. Yes, time goes on and we have to grow and we have to evolve, right? Mm -hmm. Everything can't be, you can't go to church and, without pantyhose, right? Mm -hmm. But there are some values and some morals. My husband always talks about it. Certain other cultures just have honor. They honor their elderly, right? Mm -hmm. um, honor their parents. What is it, centurions or centurions? People mm -hmm. who are 100 years old? Yep. Japan, yeah. Okinawa has a lot, like, you know what I mean? Living a life of honor and respect means something. Mm. And like you said, these kids are dying in the streets. And, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You make money off of this, this rap. See, Dolores Tucker tried to tell us. They called her a bitch, right? 
I wonder why you call you bitch. I love Pac, but I wasn't with that. Um, so many other people have come along and tried to change the directions. We put parental advisory stickers on records. We knew in the 90s what this was becoming. And now we have a whole bunch of executives who go home to communities where death isn't at their front door every other day, mm-hmm. right? Who go home to communities. You know, the fact that everything is so hypersexualized. Do you know how many young black girls get raped and kidnapped and, you know, trafficked? And we're like perpetuating this every single day in everything we do in the media. Mm-hmm. No other culture will allow it. You don't see it happening with other people. Mm. It happens specifically, almost exclusively to black people Mm. because nobody else is going for that shit. I saw something recently on on Al Gore's internet and um, it was an Israeli kind of meeting or something. I don't know, it was behind closed doors and this woman said the most dangerous um, thing that she's concerned about is uh, the African-American youth in the United States for for that, for them that's the most dangerous for them and I kept wow. I didn't see the rest of it but I was just like why are young African Americans you guys this problem but I'm assuming that they control the culture and if you see stuff happening here you want to emulate it there and there's nobody like I was telling you our culture is under parented right now mm-hmm. So there's no one monitoring what you're putting on mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. And then people across the country or people across the sea see it mm-hmm. and want to emulate it. Mm-hmm. And now you've got a whole world of people that want to drop it low. I heard there's some countries that don't allow TikTok to be TikTok in the way it's TikTok right. over here. <laughs> They're teaching them kids are learning. You know, it's just if core values education honor didn't matter then other cultures who are succeeding financially in terms of education in terms of opportunity would not be preserving those legacies in their communities yeah. period we don't have we don't have anything that we can identify with okay Generally speaking, there are people who do. There are families who are wealthy. There are black families who mm-hmm. do not participate in that. But as a general rule, if you think about, if you really just count, you go to Tubi, you go to any of these platforms, and you count the number of shows that show us in a derogatory negative light, mm-hmm. it far supersedes anything that shows us positive. Mm. Period. It's just numbers don't lie. People do. Mm. Bottom line is all you have to do is go flip through what you're watching. Go flip through what is the number one and number two movie of this and that and the third. And it's step, fetch it, drop it low, spread it wide, bang, bang, shoot them up. That is just the reality. And when you put the effort into trying to turn it into something different, like in the case of what I did with R&B Divas, like mm-hmm. in the case of what I was hoping to do mm-hmm. with P-Valley before it became what it became, mm-hmm. then you're labeled somebody who is trying to dumb stuff down or make it to kumbaya or it's just flat out stolen from you mm-hmm. and turned into the antithesis of what you created it to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, until black people as a culture start demanding, and by demanding I mean economic protest, meaning take your focus, your dollars, your energy, your time, and put it into more positive things. We know we like it. We we love Tabitha Brown. Mm -hmm. We love watching uh, Pinky Cole. Mm -hmm. We love watching um, Myel Organics, all these amazing brands. Smitty D. Smitty D, right? (laughs) We love all these amazing, incredible brands out here that are doing well. Mm-hmm. We, we love Wakanda forever. Yeah. So we love positive things. We're going to go see the color purple. Yes. Shout out to my store where Fantasia Eve. Hey. We're going to go see that when it comes. Yeah. We are a very powerful consumer. Mm-hmm. When we realize the power of that, we can start dictating the narrative a whole lot better than the culturally incompetent white male perspective that we are forced to consume. And that's just it. Let's talk about this lawsuit. What made you stop, pause, and go, wait a minute, what's happening? Talk, walk me through the process and the story. How did it start? How did it? How is it going? Right, okay, well let me first say, as a disclaimer, you can get all of the official information on PACER, okay. or Worth Media, we have a bunch of it updated there. Okay. Um, but the lawsuit is definitely not something that I wanted to do, right? Nobody takes on Goliath, um, a multi-billion dollar corporation, because they want clout. Mm -hmm. because, you know, they're being frivolous, right? Let me just point out that you are suing P-Valley or the production company. 
So the defendants, Mm -hmm. um, as they are listed on PACER, are Lionsgate, Mm -hmm. which is the parent company for STARS, which is the company who distributes it, Mm -hmm. Katori Hall, who is the credited creator of P-Valley, and several other producers. I won't name them, um, but several other producers Mm -hmm. as well. Um, And the reason all of those people are named is because we just want to get to the bottom of, like, how it happened, right? So... Um, the long and the short of it is that I did not want to pursue litigation. Number one, I wasn't looking for P Valley. Mm-hmm. My husband actually was downstairs watching the stripper show. <laughs> That's what it's called in our house. In too. the mail cave, <laughs> in the man cave, watching. Mm-hmm. And I just heard him saying, "Babe, babe, you got to come down here. You got to see this. You got to see this." And I'm just like, "I can't, I can't." He comes upstairs. He's like, "They got the bread suitcase and everything, babe. Like it's just you got to see it." And I'm like, "You know what?" And another thing had just happened. It was just that we had just gone through the whole Kelly Price COVID, you know, moment, mm-hmm. right? I just, or, or maybe shortly after, whatever, long story short, mm-hmm. I just did not, I had gone through the R&B Divas thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I just did not um, want to pursue any claims or litigation. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought there's just one or two things here that are similar, lead character similar, premise is similar. Then as I kind of just started to get calls from people like who literally were a part of the show, like, okay, first of all, we didn't get paid for the play. Now you got the whole TV show. I'm like, uh, which is not my fault, by the way, because I haven't been paid for the play either. Mm. That's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Mm. We get into the bottom of all of it. But Mm. um, long story short, I got calls from people. I watched it. I realized that the same beginning, the same middle, and the same end. It was Mm. a casino plot. It was a male-oriented strip club owned by LBGTQIA member. I I felt like there were certain nuances and certain moments that were very similar, spot on, to the character Tata Burlesque. The fact that Tata in French, you know, slang for auntie, Mm -hmm. right? So you got Uncle Clifford Mm -hmm. versus auntie Tata Burlesque, right? the vintage red suitcase in the beginning, the casino plot takeover, the homophobic antagonist who was just, you know, the the interactions and the mm-hmm. the references that were made between, you know, the owner of the club and the, and the homophobic person who was there mm-hmm. plotting to take over for a casino, mm-hmm. down to the fact that we, you know, the club was saved in the end by one of the dancers that nobody liked or nobody believed in, right? Mm. So there's so many nuances here and there. There are 57 comparisons to be exact on Pacer what? and a lot of people look at it and they say well no it's not the same because you know it was a well they gave her 100 million dollars to develop that play into a series right we had a very very small shoestring budget last minute bunch of stuff you know what I mean mm-hmm. like it just um wasn't it was my first production you know we were just excited to to move this thing along so there are a lot of Things, I guess, that people look at, you know, when they look at P-Valley and Soul Kittens Cabaret and say, well, this isn't this and this isn't that. But I think what people have to remember is that, again, the CEO of Star said they gave Katori Hall $100 million to develop P-Valley. So there are going to be certain nuances and things that are not the same. But the beginning, middle, and end of the story is the same. And, you know, my hope is that we have the opportunity after three years of going back and forth to get in front of a jury. That's what we're waiting for now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that we can find out what happened because I do not know. I do know that I met with the CEO of Lionsgate Mm -hmm. in between 2013 and 2014 Mm -hmm. and I left all of my materials including the DVD. I do know that he was involved in in the P-Valley project and you know we'd like to get to the bottom of of, of how and why and when and where and who and where's Waldo. So there's no possibility that somebody came to your show unconsciously put it into their brain and was like, oh, you know what, I got a great idea, and came up with 57 different comparisons from yours to theirs. There's no possible way. I can, you know, we're waiting for a judge to determine that we can go before a jury and have down the jury the red, determine. Down to the red suitcase, down to so many nuances, like the way she goes over and gets the clothes off the rack. You know, one of my characters, Tata, says, take off this ridiculous dress and go get yourself a costume. Mm-hmm. Uh, P-Valley, he says, girl, what's your swag? Take out, you know, it's just mm-hmm. certain little nuances. Of course, words are going to be different. Yeah, sure. Wardrobe is going to be different. You got $100 million, so you're going to make some bumps some things up here mm-hmm. and there. Mm-hmm. But when we start talking about intellectual property, and mine was copyrighted, and 
2004, mm-hmm. right? When we start talking about beginning, middle, and end of story, I can't go anywhere, mm-hmm. right? I can't come to Warner Brothers or any of the other networks and say, hey, listen, I've got this really incredible story about this beloved venue in the inner city mm-hmm. that's being taken over by casinos. You're from Detroit. Mm-hmm. You know all those places downtown. Yeah. Burt's, Baker's, Bomax. Mm-hmm. People were afraid that gentrification was actually going to happen. Yeah. And it, I mean, you know, like if you go home now, then you see it that, you know, is. that it happened, it right? Happened. But that's a real story. Casinos mm-hmm. really did come into the city. And some of those places that were lovable, beloved, mm-hmm. you know, venues, right? Um, my mom was a jazz singer. One of the first people that I was ever introduced to as an LBGTQIA member did my hair. I'm not going to say her name and bring her into this, but everybody mm-hmm. in Detroit knew her. She was a host. Mm-hmm. She was a um, an incredible person. And it was my first time. I remember being like 11 years old, like, I'm confused, like yeah. not knowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as an artist, those are my people, mm-hmm. right? I'm very, very connected to that community. Of course. So it feels, you know, pretty terrible mm-hmm. to see someone else's um, – I don't know what you want to call it. Somebody else's version mm-hmm. of a story that you wrote it that wrote that's Years like ago. spot on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's difficult to watch the award shows. It's difficult to watch um, all the awards and accolades because the people who worked on Soul Kittens over the years, we've had numerous casts. Those mm-hmm. people worked really hard, mm-hmm. and we have struggled to 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 pay the bills in every way. Mm. So to look and see that a company that I pitched this idea to. Whoa! Has now made. I would imagine if you gave somebody a hundred million dollars to develop it, you've made a significant amount of money off of it, right? Mm. Um, those people deserve. The people who have been involved with Soul Kittens from day one deserve the opportunity to to reap the benefits of helping build and develop such a great story. So I'm fighting not just. I say this all the time. I'm not just fighting this war mm-hmm. for myself. I'm fighting it. Because I believe that people have been taken advantage of. When you look at Eric Monty, who created Good Times and and, and what's happening. Yep. When you look at, Fully you know, aware. allegedly, right? I'm not trying to pull people's lawsuits out of the woodwork. When you look at Sophia Stewart, right? When you look at all the young people who have reached out to me who have had properties and ideas that they feel have been taken. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a statement to, to stand up for yours no matter what. And there's a win in that. There's victory in just calling that out. Mm-hmm. And standing in your truth and saying, I'm not going to let you piss on me and tell me that it's raining. We're going to get to a jury and we're going to talk about what happened. And we're going to, everybody's going to state their facts. They're telling me they don't think they're similar enough. Mm. I don't know how much more similar you get with 57 comparisons and the fact Down that I the left the materials briefcase, with the, the suitcase. Man, I don't know how much more similar Come you get, but we're going to find out. How do you protect yourself from that, though? If you're trying to pitch a show, because I'm, af- I'm afraid of that. Mm-hmm. We pitch shows, shows all the time. Yeah. And then I've seen shows that I've pitched come out, but just like a yeah. little little different. Yeah, well, when you got $100 million, you can make some changes, which is my big question. You had $100 million, you could have made some changes. Mm-hmm. Like, it didn't have to be the exact, exact. same story, yeah. Like right? But it was. Yeah. And I think that when you talk about protecting yourself, it is tricky, right? Mm-hmm. The whole point of me having this thing be so public and so loud Mm -hmm. is because there have been so many cases that we've never heard about right Mm -hmm. because they're not able to set precedent because people don't someone posted it on twitter they said it won't change until somebody goes all the way and sets precedent Mm -hmm. right you have to be you have to be prepared excuse me you have to be prepared to just fight you have to be prepared to just go for it. You have to be confident that you got five smooth stones like David had to take over Goliath, right? right? You just have to be prepared for that. There is no comfortable, warm, fuzzy place where you create content and you share it and it doesn't get taken from you, right? Mm. I mean, we like to believe that people don't do that all the time, but people do that all the time. Are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Are you concerned? I'm worried every single day when I wake up, right? I'm worried every single day that. um, I'm worried that the impact of my fight on my family, right? I'm prepared. My husband is prepared. But when you take on a a giant this big, right, um, 
you have to be conscious of the fact that it, it, it will have an impact on your family, whether it is me missing time with my grandson, which which infuriates me, mm-hmm. right? Um, whether it is the financial risk with three years and seven figures into this, right? Um, I'm worried about how it will negatively impact the generational legacy that I'm trying to leave for my family, Mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, that's why we do this. We do this because we hope that what we create lives long enough, just like the song I wrote 30 years ago, If You Love Me, right? Mm -hmm. We hope that that is something that we can leave for our families to be able to thrive and grow and have a place of generational wealth and wellness, right? Mm -hmm. My biggest worry is that the impact of me fighting these people for what I believe and hopefully the jury will help me determine is mine will have a lasting impact on my family. Well, I think you're doing God's work. So, And that, and at the end of the day, that's it. You that's know what right. I mean? Now, I, I don't worry so much about myself. I worry about my grandson. We've got a new granddaughter. Mm-hmm. I worry about our ki- our daughters. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We have family mm-hmm. We and, and how that impacts them. Because they don't choose that fight. I've chosen this fight. Mm-hmm. But yeah. as a result of this fight, we are leveraging everything we have. Mm. Everything. And my husband and I are good with it, but they haven't made that decision. We're making it for them. And that's the thing that that if I lose sleep at night is is the impact of this fight, as much as I'm fighting for creatives, is it going to have a negative impact on our family? Go ahead and tell them where they can find that. WIRFmedia.com. All the details are there. Got it. Are you ready? Is you ready? Is you ready? Is you ready? I'm ready. For random questions. <laughs> All right, boo. What trend? Let me let me pull it out. Let me pull okay. it out. Lighten it up. What 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 trend do you want to see go away? I want to see what trend do I want to see go away? I'm so tired of twerking. I don't need to see another person twerk. I don't need to see another twerk video. Nothing. Right. Not making here though. And basically. I really don't want to see anybody over forty twerking i don't want to you know what i don't want to see anybody who has children Mm. twerking no Mm. more Mm. i'm just tired of it what's your favorite song you haven't written um my favorite song i haven't written Mm -hmm. oh snap favorite song i haven't written is fuck around and find out (laughs) like to hear here go (laughs) are you really gonna come out with that Oh, is this serious? Yeah. Oh, okay, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a No, dope. my favorite song I've 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 never written is Victory is my name. Okay. Because my name literally Nicole means victory of the people. So Victory is my name would be the favorite. I mean, you just asked me some random shit, so I just came up with a random Thank answer. you. I appreciate you. Thank you. God, you remind me of Detroit so much. Yeah. You are family. So Detroit. Yeah. What's your favorite cuss word? <laughs> shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I have no idea what that shit is. <laughs> <laughs> do you think black women are winning or do you think we're losing? I absolutely, positively, unequivocally think that we're winning. How so? Um, because I see so much success around me, right? Like I mentioned earlier, Pinky Cole, she is she is me. She is us, mm-hmm. right? Um I mean, who Tabitha Brown is just, you know, it's just there's so they're just. Yes, we are. Do I think that um, we have a a little ways to go? I do. Mm -hmm. But I was having that conversation with my husband. I I, I think we are winning. And I think that is the reason that they are pushing this agenda of us being um, a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's why they're going so hard in the paint to try to Mm. convince us that we are not. Mm. But I believe that we are. Mm. And um, yeah. I want to be a part of that. A mm. hundred million dollar part of it. I know that's right. Who's your shero? My shero. Um, oh my! Take this is going to sound really, um, maybe a little narcissistic. Maybe hmm. I don't think of it that way, but I am my shero. Ooh, yeah. I like that. I am. 
because I am all the things that my mother and every other woman that has ever sown anything beautiful and powerful and strong into me. I'm, I'm leveraging that in the best possible way I know how. I know that I'm coming from a place of nothing but good intentions. Mm-hmm. And I love myself, like for the first time, like wholly everything. Mm-hmm. And um, there's nobody that I depend on more than myself. Mm. Favorite Detroit snack? Snack or food or food? What you going to go? Bucharest, what you boo. What you getting? Bucharest what you getting? all day. Bucharest. <laughs> And what you snack, get? What you... I Bucharest and snack. My favorite Detroit snack. I mean, come on now. Better made hot. Stop playing. I'm just saying. That's that's popular. It's a whole thing. Do we like Lou's Deli? Do you you eat, know what? It's really interesting. I'm not really a corned beef sandwich <gasps> girl, right? But hold up. Okay. But somebody gave me a corned beef egg roll and I lost my mind. Oh my god. Right. Yeah. So I had one. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody gave me a corned beef egg roll and and I lost my mind. And what is it? Asian corned beef? Is it Asian corned beef? Mm-hmm. Is that the place? I don't know. Anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. Let me stop plugging people. Out. <laughs> but Bucharest all day. Like Bucharest salad is just with the garlic butter and the pita bread mm-hmm. is fire. Mm. I love it. Mm. <laughs> do you have? I ask everybody this now. Do you have a hit list? People you will not f with anymore. Um, I do. Is it music or is it regular people? It's a little hodgepodge of both. How do they know if they're on your bad side? Do you just cut them out your phone? Delete them from your memory? How do they know? Um, Do they get a nice little text message like, don't call me no more? I have this superpower, and it is the ability to turn it off. Ooh, explain. Um, It's like, Selective attention deficit disorder. Mm. I refuse to focus on people, places, or things that I feel um, are negative or drain my energy. Like it's just an energy thing for me, mm-hmm. right? It's not even I like I don't even give it really any effort. I think people, I think most of the people, and it's not a big list. Like yeah. I don't have a huge list of people I'm yeah. just not dealing with. It's a it's a short, very direct, and straightforward list. They and I think they, they know who they are. I think yeah. they know who they are. Yeah. And some people publicly know who they are as mm-hmm. well. I think they know who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they know who they are. They feel the vibes. Mm. <laughs> Y'all used to be compared to Jade back in the day. Do you remember Did that? Did we? Just a little bit. A little bit? I don't know. Y'all I was love compared. Jade. I who think else Jade were you guys dope. compared to? You know, it's really interesting. Brownstone, what I'd always heard is that we were very unique. Very unique. Because you guys you know, can actually Big old sing. mouths. You, you know, I was bald headed with a big mouth. And <laughs> our harmonies were quiet. I would say maybe a little bit of the Clark sisters. And mm. not, okay, that's, look, okay, I'm tripping. I'm reaching. <laughs> but I think just in terms of the gospel sort of infused, <laughs> mm-hmm. big, built out backgrounds, yeah. I think we were unique. I love it. I Last mean, come on. Who else is saying, say it, do it, show it, prove it? You like, know they still brown, play that. So. That's how you know you're still popping because they play, they still play your and stuff. And I want the youngins to understand that Tory Lanez did not create that say it, do it, say it, That's show it, prove it up. That is grown people. Yeah, grown people. But shout out because I do kind of like them giving life back to songs that, you know. I just I want the life to accompany a check. Hey, you don't get paid from that? That's another conversation for another day. <sighs> Oh, we must invite her back. I think that's the thing. That's the smoke in the mirrors, honey. They say, listen, here you hear your song on the radio? It's great, isn't it? And when you're young, like I will never forget, me and Maxie heard our song in the remix. We jumped out the car, Hollywood and Sunset, screaming, geeked up, called everybody. We on jet, cover jet. Now I am less interested in the pop and circumstance and far more interested in the check. So you're saying that that remake, you don't make money. I'm saying that I was told that there was a deal that was done because they couldn't reach me, some some sort of language like that, and we're still getting to the bottom of it. Yeah, we got a lot of things to get to the bottom of. Soul Kittens, DVD sales, all kind Where of Where the lawyer at? Wait, uh-uh. Oh, I got five of them. 17 of and them. seven figures in. Jeez And Louise. we got a long list of things to right. look into. My last question, my love. Mm. It's the end you're you're going to see God if if that's what you believe. Yes. What do you hope God says to you? Um Ooh, that's deep. Um 
All I want God to say is welcome. You made it. <laughs> he ain't got to tell me nothing else. Like hey, like the Safe. man at the gate. The say, right. You, welcome. You made it. Right. Because I think you know if we're if we're lucky, you know, mm. that's what happens. Welcome. Welcome. That's it. And your your mom and your dad and Maxie and all of them are over there. Mm. Yeah. That's it. Party of seventeen. Please come through. <laughs> that's it. That. Yeah. Let everybody know where they can find you. Um. Nikki Gilbert on Instagram um, and Worth Media, W I R F Media.com. Mm, what's the name of the book? Should I say it here? I will say it here. Yeah. The book is Diary of a Diva. I love that. Thank you. It's We've not- been playing around with it for a while. That was the original name of RB Divas before it became that and I said that's because God wanted me to go on ahead and, and, and yep we've already um, I'm I'm finishing up a chapter and that chapter is going to be my name is Victory against mm. Stars, Lions, Gate, Katori Hall and Pete Valley mm. so we want to make sure we wrap that into it but everything else is pretty much there already well that's awesome I just want to say a special thank you to you because you thank don't you. even know maybe you do know but you guys don't know that I actually started my career in here because of you and I was doing, Aww. I was doing hair at home, y'all. I was <laughs> on Craigslist, listing it up. And, and now you don't work with everybody, every housewife, every movie star, every everything, honey. And Derek Blank's actually a lot of people. I'm really proud to say Chloe and Hallie, Derek Blank. Like there are a lot of people mm-hmm. I was able to, you know, thankfully I be a part really, of. Really, because you careers. were my first celebrity that I ever did. That's you crazy. introduced me so. to so many people. I that's remember one party crazy. you invited me to. I was like, is that Tiana Taylor? Oh my God, that's crazy. Who is that? Is that Selena Johnson? Is that Tatiana Ali? (laughs) You know. Thank you. It was. That's what it's about for me. Like, listen. You woke that up in me. Thank you. I just want you to know. Oh my God. And then she was like, okay, I'm done. Bam. No, I just, (laughs) you know, there's so much stuff going on out here in these streets. And as a creative, I'm always creating something. Yeah. So I thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, I thank you for inviting me here. And I'm, of course, so proud of you. And you're beautiful and smart. And. Hopefully, and from um, Detroit, because baby, listen, and you and Kenya just give me the the, the <laughs> energy is so <laughs> spot on, similar. It's just Kenya and I were good friends yeah. some time ago. I get compared to her energy. so much. Yeah, it's you crazy. guys have very similar. Energy. We're both Aquariuses, and we both went to cast. Ah, oh, and say, yeah, mm-hmm. see there, see there. There you go. There you go. Well, I met her when she was at Cody. She was oh. at a hood school for a minute. That's oh, okay. We yeah, yeah, I went to for reference. Half a yeah, I went to reference. We, you know, y'all and got smart and then went over to the. You know. Yeah, we went to the other side. Yeah, we okay. <laughs> All right, with a special thank you to Nikki Gilbert Daniels. Uh, I yes. would like to say my old boss a little bit because, um, you know. I love it. I love you, too. I love you. Well, I'm so I love proud you. of you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, if you like more of this content, you can definitely reach out to us. But first, you want to like, share, comment, and subscribe. But if you want to get in contact with us directly, you can reach out to us at info at smittyandd.com. Again, that's info at smittyandd.com. And until next time, guys, take care of one another. Thank you.